simply XBRL just stands for Extensible Business Reporting Language. It's a data tagging language designed to facilitate the definition and distribution of financial data. It was developed and managed by an international non-profit organization called the XBRL Consortium and is currently supported by around 400 organizations worldwide. It's gaining in recognition and usage very rapidly and regulators uh, throughout the world in, at this stage in at least 20 countries are using it in their disclosure systems. Because of the way that XBRL is structured, investors around the world can access and understand XBRL statements no matter where the company is located. Most companies are required to file annual statements such as a balance sheet or income statement to demonstrate the state of their finances. And I think the income statement here should be familiar with most people with an accounting background. It basically shows all the income received and expenses incurred during the year by an organization, which are then consolidated into a number of categories, such as interest income, deferred taxes, etc. We'll use this simple example to explain how financial statements can be represented in XBRL. To start with, there are two key documents in XBRL. The first is what we call the taxonomy. It's basically created by regulators such as the SEC. The second one is what we term the instance document, and that's created by the regulated entity, the company reporting to the SEC, such as a listed company. Basically, the taxonomy is simply a way to describe and classify the reporting concepts within a financial statement. A concept is simply a piece of information in the statement, like sales, selling, um, general administrative expenses. The taxonomy is simply a collection of all these concepts and how they're related. On the other hand, the instance document, the one being submitted to the SEC, has company-specific data relating to the concepts in the taxonomy. In this case, the value of the sales or the SG&A are considered facts and go in the instance document. Other information that offers a context to these facts, such as, uh, for instance, the period for which the facts apply, is also found in this instance document. Note that the instance document just contains the concept values and not how to relate them. The relationship between the concepts and how to define them are in the taxonomy. So representing data in XBRL means that all the information that's currently in my financials can be classified and represented in XBRL. Each unique what we term financial concept or fact in a financial report is represented by a unique element in the XBRL taxonomy. This single financial fact is called an item. For example, in this income statement, all the financial facts are items. Each element has additional qualifying information associated with it called attributes. If we look at net sales in the income statement, for example, you'll see that um, this is represented in the taxonomy on the right-hand side with a name and an ID. Um, as the box of the, at the bottom right of the screen shows, net sales is also a monetary item. As net sales is a financial fact which occurs over a period of time, it's defined as having a period type of duration. In other words, it's true over that period of time, not at a particular instance of time. And the period type will be discussed further when we look at XBRL contacts in the instance document. In this example here, the operating costs and expenses is simply a heading in the income statement. It's not an actual value. So what we do there is we create it as what we term an abstract um, uh, value in the uh, taxonomy. The names, you probably noticed that the names we've been using are not always terribly meaningful. They're basically, they have to conform to what we call XML standards. So what we need to do is to uh, have names that are more meaningful for people who are reading these reports. And that's where we use what we term the label link base. And you'll hear this term link base a few times. It's just simply a way of adding extra information to elements in an XBRL document. In this case, we're representing that name uh, in an English uh, fashion, which is nice and easy to read. It can have spaces in it, etc. We come to another, what, uh, what we term link base. And in this case, what we're doing is we're using a thing called the presentation link base 
to actually create a structure to the document. Um, this allows us to have uh, the, the order and hierarchy of the presentation. However, don't be misled by the term presentation. It doesn't specify attributes like fonts, colors, backgrounds, or page breaks. It's simply the order and the hierarchy. This slide, for instance, for instance shows a representation of the presentation link base using our x wand taxonomy editor. As you can see, the, finance, the layout of the presentation link base closely models that of the structure of the financial document itself. The presentation link base, uh, for example, shows that the heading Other Income Expenses includes interest income and uh, dividend income, etc. So if we look back on the left-hand side, we can see that they, that's mirroring the structure of the physical uh, printed document. Um, other uh, income expenses in the XBRL taxonomy, as I mentioned, is an abstract item as shown by a little red A that you might be able to see right next to it. As such, it'll never have a value. And looking at the income statement, we can see that this is exactly what happens. Another uh, of our uh, link bases is the calculation link base. And this is the one that's designed to allow us to show calculations, show what um, the totals uh, and subtotals should be. In this example, you can see that other income total is the sum of um, interest income, dividend income, equity in uh, earnings of affiliates, etc. Looking back on the left-hand side, we can, again, we can see that this is the structure of the calculations on that side. 